Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks with Greenergrass.com. Right now, I'm in Munich. I'm on my way to Washington's Dulles International Airport with Lufthansa on an A350. If you've been watching this channel for any period of time, you know that's my favorite airplane. I can't wait to see how Lufthansa does it. But first, let's check out the lounge. Today's journey would take about nine hours and cover 4,200 miles or so. We'd initially cruise at 36,000 feet before climbing all the way up to 40,000. It was a pretty bumpy flight, but our pilots did their best to find smooth air as we traveled from the Bavarian capital to the capital city of the United States. Because we were fortunate enough to be traveling in business class, we enjoyed access to Lufthansa's business class lounge. We also had access to the Senator Lounge thanks to our Star Alliance Gold status. Unfortunately, both were pretty crowded, so we really had a hard time finding seats and left rather quickly. Lufthansa flights to the United States leave Munich from either the H gates or the L gates. Those are in the newer satellite terminal, and that's where our flight was scheduled to depart. Passengers traveling to the United States must go through a secondary screening process before gaining access to the gate. Once we got back there, there really wasn't much to do. It was just one small food cart with limited options. Thankfully, however, there were great views of aircraft coming and going, and that's always a highlight for me. Our aircraft was quite new, having joined the fleet only eight months ago. The boarding process was distinctly un-German. It was chaotic, and few passengers seemed willing to follow the gate agent's requests that we board with our groups. Once we were on the jet bridge, though, my mind wandered a bit. If you were ever deciding whether to connect in Munich or Frankfurt, it can be a tough call. A trip through Frankfurt may involve a hard stand, buses, and lots of stairs. But it's just never seemed quite as crowded as Munich can be. But what do you think? Leave a comment. Would you rather connect in Frankfurt or Munich? Lufthansa took delivery of their first A350 in December 2016. Often, launching a new aircraft type can be an opportunity for an airline to reinvigorate their interiors, to improve their passengers' experiences. That's exactly what Delta did, for example, when they introduced their A350. In fact, it became the springboard to redesign the cabins in their entire long-haul fleet, Lufthansa, though, they went in a different way, or rather, they really didn't go anywhere. You see, these seats are practically identical to every other business class seat on every other plane in the Lufthansa fleet. Now, to say I think this is too bad, the A350 was really the perfect opportunity to try something new. In fact, nearly every operator has used the A350 platform to innovate in some way, adding enclosed suites, introducing one-to-one -one business class cabins, or improved premium economy seats. Unfortunately, though, Lufthansa planners just didn't agree. Now, admittedly, the roomy seat is well designed and nearly everything is readily accessible. I can kind of understand why Lufthansa wouldn't redesign it, until I remember it's in a 222 configuration in business class. If you know your seatmate, as I did, that's not really a problem. But if you don't, you better head for the middle. My favorite aspect of the A350, though? That wing. Lufthansa provides very comfortable bedding, which I enjoyed for this journey. As I said, the seat is well designed. It provides everything you'd expect on a medium to long haul business class flight. To that point, there's sufficient storage. The amenity kit and a bottle of water are provided here. We'll take a closer look at the amenity kit after a while. I've flown with Lufthansa Business Class on the A330, 747-8, and now the A350. If I had the choice, I'd fly in first class. Just kidding. The best option, in my opinion, is to fly Business Class upstairs on the 747-8. Soon, we were off the ground for our nine-hour nighttime flight to the east coast of the United States. The highlight of this flight for me was the in-flight entertainment system. The screen is just the right size for this seat. It's bright and responsive, and in addition to excellent maps, there's also external cameras. I really wish U.S. airlines would adopt this feature. It makes the flight so much more enjoyable. Keep watching for some epic views from this camera. The seat has plenty of adjustments, and the tray table is large enough to eat on or work, but not both at the same time. 
And unlike United Airlines Polaris seat, there's no easy way to have a laptop open during a meal. I really struggled to find the headphone jack, like really struggled. And after what can only be described as a thorough search of the seat, I finally discovered it in the cubby to my right. Lufthansa used to provide Bose noise-canceling headphones. Unfortunately, they no longer do. As we both settled in, service began with some almonds and a drink from the bar. It was a gin and tonic for me and the channel's brilliant creative director, a woman you might better know as my stunning girlfriend, celebrated the final leg of another successful video series with a glass of champagne. The flight attendant assigned to our section, the so-called mini-cabin, was great. And that mini-cabin, for what it's worth, seemed kind of loud and had a lot of traffic. I wouldn't recommend it in the future. The veal starter was nice, but the Christmas goose was the highlight for me. This was my first time eating goose, and it was great to have the chance to enjoy this traditional German dish, which was recreated very well in the air. It tasted more like beef than anything. I'd definitely choose it again. After dinner, we were presented with cool Lufthansa advent calendars filled with chocolate. While not quite as impressive as KLM's Delft's houses, it was a great touch and definitely got me in the holiday spirit on this flight, which took place on the 1st of December. Getting in and out of this seat was straightforward, not as easy as, say, Hawaiian's 222 business class, but it was doable. The cabin features a total of 293 seats. 224 of them are 17-inch wide economy seats with 31 inches of pitch. They are laid out in a 333 configuration. There are also 21 18-inch wide premium economy seats with 38 inches of pitch arranged in a 232 configuration. Finally, 48 lie-flat business class seats offer 78 inches of bed space and 20 inches of width. I really think other airlines like Delta, Malaysia, and Philippine Airlines have done a much better job configuring their A350s, but what do you think? Leave a comment with your thoughts on Lufthansa's A350 seating configuration. Flying at night often means there's not a lot to see out the windows, but shortly after I raised the shade, civilization came into view. The amenity kit was a soft bag with the basics. I really enjoyed the IFE. Forgetting what was on my iPad, I watched not one, not two, but three movies on the ride across the pond. A hot towel preceded the pre-arrival meal, and Lufthansa take the hot part very seriously. I was starting to feel a little sick, so I opted for a bowl of soup. It was hearty and delicious, and coupled with a cup of tea and a soft pretzel, it really helped me feel better. We were all over the sky, so the pilots turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. I feel like U.S. airlines turn it on much more frequently than European ones, so I figured this would mean we were in for some bumps, and we were. The pilots descended 8,000 feet before climbing another 4,000, all over about 40 minutes in search of smooth air. We never did find any. I rate my international first and business class flights using an admittedly subjective scale I jokingly call the JEB score. Let's see how Lufthansa did. I rate their lounge, the seat, the food, their in-flight entertainment, and the service. First, the lounges in Munich were so crowded that they really weren't useful. They were both fine and seemed consistent with the rest of the Lufthansa lounges I visited, but I wish they'd been a little bigger, at least for this day and time. I'll give them three stars here. The seat was okay. It was uh, well designed for a business class seat, but the fact that they kept the 222 configuration when I think they had an opportunity to change it really hurts them in my book. I'm going to give them two stars here. The food was delicious. Every bit the business class meal, I really liked having a traditional German favorite at this time of year. Four stars here. And the in-flight entertainment did what you'd expect and a bit more. I love those cameras. It was easy to find what I wanted to watch. and Even though it wasn't as impressive as, say, Emirates ICE system, I'm still giving it the five stars it deserves. Finally, our flight attendants were great, and I really appreciated the regular but unobtrusive updates from the flight deck. But they weren't as enthusiastic as other Lufthansa crews. This was four-star service in my book. So that leaves Lufthansa with 18 stars for this A350 business class flight from Munich to Washington, D.C. But what do you think? 
leave a comment with your thoughts, and between now and the next time, see you in the sky.